Now we'll study 10th standard ICSC chemistry, chapter 9, practical chemistry, the third part, the last part, identification of cations and anions. As studied in the chapter 3b, analytical chemistry, we can identify the cation of a salt by addition of an alkali, say NaOH or NH4OH. Because the different salts will react to give precipitates of varying colors or solubility. If you add sodium hydroxide to a salt and it gives you a dirty green precipitate which is insoluble even in excess of NaOH, that's a ferrous salt. So we've identified the cation. Now if it is ferrous nitrate, ferrous chloride, ferrous sulfate, the anion part can be identified separately. Right now let's focus on the cation part of it. But if you get a reddish brown precipitate which is insoluble even in excess, that is a ferric salt. If you get a pale blue precipitate which is insoluble even in excess of NaOH, that is cuprous salt. If you get a milky white precipitate insoluble in excess, that's a calcium salt. If you get a gelatinous white precipitate, but it is soluble in excess of NaOH, then that is definitely a zinc salt. Why soluble? Because if you look at the reactions out here, everywhere a precipitate is formed. But in case of zinc, the precipitate will react with excess of NaOH. The zinc hydroxide will react with excess of NaOH to give you a complex salt that is a sodium zincate and the precipitate will disappear which is only possible for zinc as well as for lead so even lead will give you a chalky white precipitate but hey how can you be very sure whether it's gelatinous white or chalky white it is still soluble in excess of NaOH so if you want to distinguish between a zinc salt and a lead salt don't use NaOH as a reagent because both will ultimately give you the same observation a colorless solution in the end when used in excess rather use ammonium hydroxide as a reagent because here again zinc salts will form a gelatinous white precipitate and it is soluble in excess because a complex salt is formed here that's tetramine zinc sulfate but lead in this case does not form any soluble salt it is insoluble. The precipitate is insoluble even in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So this way we can distinguish between zinc salts and lead salts. <clears throat> but when it comes to ammonium salts, well, reacting it with ammonium hydroxide itself will not give us any observation at all. Whereas reacting it with sodium hydroxide and heating it will give you a gas which will turn moist litmus paper blue. And it will even turn Nestler's reagent brown. Which gas is that? Yes, ammonia gas. So that will that'll be a good test to prove that the salt is indeed an ammonium salt. Talking about ammonium hydroxide used for identifying the cations, the observations are exactly the same. Just a few differences. I already, already talked about lead observation being different compared to with sodium hydroxide. And calcium, surprisingly, the calcium salt will not give you any precipitate. You see, ammonium hydroxide is a weaker alkali compared to sodium hydroxide. So that's not sufficient to form a precipitate with calcium salts. Another difference is copper salts would give us a blue precipitate here. But with ammonium hydroxide, that blue precipitate, that is copper hydroxide, will react with the excess of ammonium hydroxide to give you an inky blue solution. So a soluble salt is formed even here. That is tetramine copper sulfate. So here, uh, soluble salts are formed with copper and zinc salts in case of ammonium hydroxide. And in case of sodium hydroxide, the soluble salts are formed with sodium and lead salts. So keep this in mind. Of course, flame test is also useful to identify certain cations like sodium, potassium, calcium and copper, especially sodium and potassium because if you notice, here sodium and potassium is not included. They do not give precipitate at all. So how will you identify them? It has to be the flame test. Sodium gives a golden yellow test and potassium gives a lilac or purple test. Calcium gives a brick red and copper gives a green flame. So that's how we can identify the cations. Now let's talk about the anions how to identify the anions and we'll focus on six specific anions first of all uh, say you've got the cation it's zinc or it's lead or it's calcium but is it a carbonate or a sulfide or a sulfide or a sulfate or a chloride or a nitrate how will you identify that so we'll do another experiment for the anion part of it first of all whenever you have any carbonate and you add dilute sulfuric acid to it and heat it then carbon dioxide gas will be released that's the typical acidic property but how do we know it's carbon dioxide gas? Well, the colorless gas will turn lime water milky and it will have no effect on acidified potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate solution. 
this would prove that the salt is indeed a carbonate maybe a zinc carbonate or a lead carbonate or a calcium carbonate another test could be that just add some uh, barium chloride or barium nitrate to it you will notice that a white precipitate is formed which is soluble in dilute hydrochloric acid it's soluble so even this would prove it's a carbonate compare these features with that of uh, those of sulfite to sulfite if we would have added a dilute acid and heated it we would have still got a gas which turns lime water milky but that gas would turn acidified potassium permanganate from pink to clear colorless or acidified potassium dichromate from orange to clear green that gas is so2 proving it is a sulfite and not a carbonate it's important to write the word clear because uh, H2S also gives the same test. But in that case, we don't have a clear solution in the end. We have yellow particles as well. But what if to the sulfite, we add barium chloride or barium nitrate? Well, even here, a white precipitate will be formed, which will be soluble in dilute HCl. So this test cannot be used to distinguish between carbonate and sulfite. Perhaps this test is useful to distinguish between this anion with some other anion like a sulfate. So let's talk about sulfate first. Here, uh, adding a, a dilute acid and heating will be of no use. The sulfate will not decompose. So the only test for it is adding barium chloride or barium nitrate. And here, the white precipitate form is, ins is insoluble even in dilute HCl. So that's how you can distinguish between a carbonate and a sulfate or a sulfite and a sulfate. So if a question is asked that there is zinc sulfite and there is zinc sulfate, how will you distinguish between the two? So see how to frame the answer. I can use any one test. So let me give you both the answers. Answer number one. Add dilute H2SO4 to both the test tubes and heat them. The one which gives a colorless gas which turns lime water milky and turns acidified potassium permanganate from pink to clear colorless is zinc sulfite. And the one which doesn't give such a test is zinc sulfate. Done. Another test. Let me give you another answer. I'm using the second test now, which is the only test for this. To both the test tubes, add barium chloride. The one which gives white precipitate which is soluble in dilute HCl is zinc sulfite. And the one which gives white precipitate, which is insoluble even in diluted Cl, is zinc sulfate. So that's how we frame answers of distinguish between. We focus on one test. One test tube will be, give you positive test and the other won't give you such an observation. Equations are not required to be written unless they specifically ask for it. How will you identify a sulfide? Well, again, add H2SO4 dilute and heat it. This time, which gas is released? H2S gas is released. So just give the test for H2S gas and that will prove that it was a sulfide salt. What is the test for H2S gas? Well, it turns moist lead acid paper silvery black. That's the best test. If you just write black, it's okay. Uh, you can give the uh, test for with acidified potassium permanganate and dichromate also with yellow particles, but let's go for the easy option. Next, what if you have a chloride? Well, again, you have two options, two tests. Test number one, add conch sulfuric acid to it. Conch, these things matter, otherwise you get zero entirely. And heat it, it's a chloride. So which gas is released? Remember a non-volatile acid displaces a more volatile acid? Yes, a more volatile acid, HCl, is released and give the test for HCl. Let's say a glass rod dipped in uh, ammonium hydroxide, that is aqueous ammonia, is brought near this gas and dense white fumes are released, which is ammonium chloride. That means that it was a chloride salt. You can give the, some other test for HCl also, like this white precipitate one. Another test for chloride, add manganese dioxide and conch H2SO4. We just studied this in part 2 and heat it. This is a highly oxidizing agent. So chlorine gas is released, a greenish yellow gas is released, which turns moist starch iodide paper blue black. This was a test for chlorine gas, remember? This proves that the salt has chloride in it. And finally, nitrate. Again, there are two tests. To the salt, add conch sulfuric acid and copper turnings and heat it. If it was nitric acid, then copper turnings would not be required. If it is any other nitrate, sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, ferric nitrate, then add copper, nit copper turnings and heat it. A reddish brown fumes are released, which we know it's NO2. But what is the proof? Well, it turns, uh, it gives violet vapors from potassium iodide solution and leaving a brown residue. Do you remember from test of gases, what was a brown, brown residue? It was potassium nitrite. You can give some other test also, like this reddish brown gas will turn acidified ferrous sulfate solution from green to brown, which was uh, similar to the next test. Directly add this salt to acidified ferrous sulfate solution. If you see a brown ring at the junction, you know, brown ring test, which we studied in nitric acid chapter. That means it's a nitrate salt. So using this knowledge, let me give you a question. How will you distinguish between sodium chloride and sodium nitrate? Think about it. Sodium chloride and sodium nitrate. How will you distinguish them? So to see how to frame the answer. I can use any one test. 
Answer number one. Uh, add both the salts to acidified ferrous sulfate solution. The one which gives you a brown ring is sodium nitrate and the one which doesn't is sodium chloride. That's it. Or how about this? Uh, add the salt to conch sulfuric acid and heat it. The one which gives a gas, which gives dense white fumes when a glass rod dipped in aqueous ammonia is brought near it is sodium chloride. Whereas the one which doesn't give such an observation is sodium nitrate. By the way, sodium nitrate would have given vapors of nitric acid in, in this same uh, action. Okay, another answer. Add manganese dioxide and conch H2SO4 to both the test tubes and heat them. The one which gives a greenish yellow gas, which turns moist starch iodide paper blue-black, is sodium chloride. And the one which doesn't is sodium nitrate. One more answer. Add the salt to conch sulfuric acid with copper turnings and heat it. Yeah, copper turnings and heat it. The one which gives reddish-brown fumes, which liberates violet vapors and leaves a brown residue is silver is sodium nitrate whereas the one which gives a colorless gas which gives dense white fumes when a glass rod dipped in aqueous ammonia is brought near it is sodium chloride so here i did not say that uh, the one which does not give reddish brown fumes is sodium chloride instead i had to give the observation for both sodium chloride and nitrate because uh, both of them did give me some observation in some cases, for example, in the test with barium chloride, if you add barium chloride to sulfite and sulfide, in sulfite, there is an observation that white precipitate is formed, so that is sulfite. But in sulfide, there is no such observation. So here we can see that no observation is formed, so that is sulfide. But if there is an observation in both, then you have to write both of them. So when you solve the exercise and practice this a lot, then it will become easy for you. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.